Welcome back to Navy Sports Magazine, right smack dab in the middle of the women's tennis season with Megan Akamaraju joining us here. And you're a player that gets to do what I, I call the fun things. You get to play both singles and doubles right now. It, I, I don't know if pressure is the right word. I, I never I never throw that word around too lightly, but what's the challenge to play both and obviously play it at a high level like you uh, and some of your teammates are doing right now? Um, well, first of all, I, I'm definitely, I definitely feel lucky that I get to play both. It's a lot of fun playing doubles with Katrina, but there's definitely like that physical aspect that comes with it. Um, it's just more hours on the court or even, like at the end of the day with as many matches as there are in the season, it all kind of adds up. Um, but I think it's also kind of nice because especially if you have doubles before singles, it's a great way to get sharp, get the feet moving so you can go into singles and you kind of have your hand in the right mindset. Um, so it definitely has its like perks to it as well. Great challenges here at the Naval Academy, both academically and athletically. And to be a division one athlete, to be doing it both in singles and doubles, what are the challenges for you to physically take care of yourself to make sure that you're maximizing everything, not only athletically, but obviously the great energy you have to give to the academic side uh, as well here? Um, yeah, I mean, big thing is sleep. Got to make sure you're getting enough of that. And I'm really lucky I have amazing team trainer, Sean, as well as our um, athletic trainer, Madison. She like makes sure that we're doing our off-court conditioning. And I definitely feel like I'm always in my like in the best physical shape when I'm in, in season. We have great support staff when it comes to that. And also just coaches do a really good job looking out for us. Um, we're always harping on taking care of ourselves. And sometimes it's kind of tough to get on that homework grind after practice, <laughs> but you got to make time for it and do what you can to just balance both. Because at the end of the day, you are here and being a midshipman is like your priority. So getting the academics done is just as important, if not more. I was going to say, what realistically is the proper or the most consistent amount of sleep that you get during the course uh, during the course <laughs> of the playing season because that's right. clearly where the greatest challenge is. Right. Where's where's the, what's the most sleep that we're looking at? Five hours a night. Um, six? I tried I tried to get at least six hours a night. You know, exam weeks. I try not to count those. Those are <laughs> those are odd. Balls, that's a different time. That's, that's a different time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I usually try to get at least six to seven hours of sleep just because that's the only way that I'm gonna be able to like bring my best game if I'm not rested. I'm not bring everything that I can to the court, then I'm kind of doing my team a disservice too. So it's it's on me to balance my school and my tennis, not just for myself, but for the sake of doing everything I can for the team. Yeah, being a local product out of James Madison of Vienna, to to be local, to have a, a sense of support, you know, somewhat around you, how much does that help you with the experience here? Because it's, it's quite a challenge, there's no doubt. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely helped a lot being as close as I am to home. Um, just the fact that friends and family can come out at like a moment's notice is something that I'm very, very thankful for. And it's definitely something that also, I feel like there's a lot of people here that are close to home and they know what it's like having the family here. And I still have a great sponsor family, like support system here. So it's just definitely not something I take for granted. Um, thankful for it for sure. Being a good player at the high school level is one thing and playing at the division one level, what has that transition been like? tougher than you expected, about what you expected? What, what's it been like? Um, it's definitely tougher than expected. One thing that's nice is that up until college tennis, you don't really have that team aspect when you're playing junior tennis. Um, it's kind of like you against the world in junior tennis. But once you get to college tennis, you got at least you got your team to support you, but there's a lot more on your plate for sure. Uh, the hours you're putting in off the court and on the court for the sake of tennis alone is definitely far greater. And then the workload from school and other academy obligations on top of that definitely just completely surpasses anything I faced until until now. Sure. Keith and Ellie, your coaches have built a, quite a program here in a short amount of time and, and a really good, positive culture. What What's it been like to fit into that culture? And, and now, obviously, you hope to add you know, your legacy to what other players who've come before you have, have really set a nice standard here. Honestly, I am so thankful for... I'm having the amazing coaches that I have from like the day that I've um, joined the team. It's always been about uplifting each other. It's never really been about competing within the team or worrying about where you play. It's about doing whatever you can, whether you're on the court or off the court to just get that team to get the dub. So I hope that my presence on the team has helped kind of contribute to that team goal and that team mindset. Um, last year, our team captain, Kat Rico, and this year, our team captain, Dan, they've both really done a great job of just harping on that like team mentality. And it's something that 
I hope to keep going with my class and the team right now. I don't know what it is about women's tennis. and I don't know how much you get to see, you know, outside of when you're playing and stuff like that. But, you know, we see, we saw Serena obviously set a, a, a ridiculous standard for several years. Now we're seeing youngsters like Coco Golf and, and Sophia Kennan, who just won uh, the Australian Open. When you see players like those two who are closer to your age than they are Serena's, uh, do, is that kind of inspiring to see players? And certainly, I mean, uh, women's tennis, I, 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 we've had great players in the past. I don't know if we've ever had the depth of quality uh, that we've had. But to see players like Sophia Kennan and like Coco Golf having success as a young player yourself, how inspiring is that? It's so inspiring. It's crazy to see people that like you played in the same tournaments as now coming out and winning Grand Slams and getting to quarters. And it's inspiring because you know the work that they put in. I, I remember seeing Coco Goff out there on the court. She's such a fighter. And it's also great to see that they're, they're also great people off the court too. And I think that it's, it's just, it's good to see American tennis really taking that next step on with the next generation and seeing that those footsteps being I'm sure you've seen good and bad out there, especially, you know, on the way up in junior tennis, but is it easy to root for people like them because, you know, you've had those interactions, you you know, the honest work that they put in to to all of it? It's, it's definitely a lot easier to root for them just because of the fact that from day one, they've always just been the kind of players that come out there and they have a job to get done. And that's what they focus on. They never tried to undercut any other players. They've always been great sports. So I'm just very excited to see people like that succeeding. And right. American Junior Tennis. Great stuff. Appreciate the time today. Thank you. You got it. Megana Komaraju joining us here, talking women's tennis, the Navy Sports Magazine.